Epstein Island. Uh, no. Believe the science. Uh, no. 15 minute cities. Uh, no. And CBDCs. No. Gates is good. Uh, no. And GMO food. Uh, no. Big Pharma wants help. Uh, no. And government's help. Good evening. Hello. It is Monday night. Had a wonderful day today. Um, had a strategy call at 11 a.m. Then we had our Vets and Crypto show where Ali King from Pulse Wars came on and told us a little bit more about what's going on with Pulse Wars, which is launching on the 30th. Looking forward to that. Um, I think it's going to be 5 p.m. Eastern on the 30th. A new game coming to Pulse Chain where we can battle each other and see if we can out-trade each other with our um, <clears throat> weekly trades over the course of uh, the year. And The maximum pool for the prize is giant. Just giant. <laughs> Give me millions of dollars uh, for the winner. So I recommend everyone... Check out Pulse Wars. Thank you, Ali, for coming on and telling us about it. What's up, Funk Master Hex? Bright light. Yep, I made it this time. <laughs> Mexican Macho. Yes, yes. Funk Master Hex, Bright Light, Mexican Macho. Believe in yourself. Good to see you, sir. Um, I want to talk about something tonight. Before I get to that, though, uh, I do have to comment about uh, Dick with butt. Dick with butt keeps kicking butt. I don't own any Dick with butt, and I don't plan on owning any Dick with butt. But if you are one of the DGens who <laughs> are in that, congratulations, uh, you've done very well. I missed out. And I wasn't paying attention, but I guarantee if I I knew that Too Spooky was launching a token. Would have been buying on the first day. I just don't buy green candles. I have an affinity for red candles. I like to buy red candles. <laughs> Folks who buy green candles like to get wrecked. Yeah, sure. You know, if you if you keep buying a red candle and it just keeps dipping and dipping and dipping, you know, you, you're gonna get wrecked too. But as long as you're in a quality project, something or the red candle sooner or later will turn to green candles. And that's what I've been doing. So as I told my no permissions crew today in our strategy call, um, I'm sticking with the tools. Uh, today I did put out a, a tweet. Let me share it real quick. Let me, let me make sure I get to the right spot first. You guys don't see, need to see my DMs. <laughs> Let's keep it straight. All right, share screen. But uh, I'll write this one. All right. This is my tweet earlier today. Levi Strauss did not get rich during the California gold rush by mining gold. He got rich by selling the tools and goods the miners needed. Now let's look at crypto. You can trade crypto, that being, but being on the tool side is where the real money is at. That is why I like liquidity providing, farming, lending, single-sided staking pools, etc. DeFi. Over time, just a few people were survive trading, but almost everyone can participate in the rest of DeFi. Chasing green candles is a dangerous game. Hope you guys uh, get that. It's pretty simple to understand. Uh, don't chase green candles. Play the long game. Be the turtle, not the hare. Go in and put your money into uh, stuff that's going to print you money daily. It could be just a few dollars a day. But once the bull market's full of steam, those few dollars a day could turn into a couple tens a day and then a couple hundreds a day and a couple thousands. 
pull all my hexagons, raise their hands and, and tell the world what we went through in 2021 when we were earning thousands of dollars per day for believing in something early on and just sticking with it. And the same thing can happen to you uh, by getting involved now and holding through the bull market. Now, there is a time you got to take profits. I know a lot of you guys don't know how to take profits. Um, this is how I would do it. And that way you, it's all house money is that when you have your first three, four, five X in the crypto, you sell your initial investment That's all, and let the, less, the rest of it ride. Just let it ride. I did that with PGG, PTGC. I did that with Alien. I did that with Buy and Burn. I'm going to do that with the reptilian currency. I'm still a little bit underwater with that one right now. Um, those are some of the examples. Uh, they're not projects that I am like, hey, look, check out these projects that I'm in. It's just that now three out of those four are riding with casino money, and hopefully they end up doing something. And I know PTGC tends to do well when Pulse Chain does well. So when Pulse Chain does turn around, it's going to fly. Um, another one is UpX. I sold UpX when it hit into the fives. I sold some of mine and some of my other wallets, and I bought back a bunch this week. You know, I, I, I'm in and out all the time. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, Randy, but you sold some UpX. Yeah, I'm in and out all the time. That's, that's how I play the game with some of these tokens. But if you want to make the big money, just ride out with house money. Imagine you got into Dick with Butt like three days ago, and now you're up 10x maybe. Take your initial investment out, and you don't give a shit what Dick with Butt does in the future. If it goes 100x, congratulations. If it goes 1,000x, wow, you did well. But if it goes back down to zero, at least you still have your initial investment. So that's uh, that's just uh, an idea for you guys out there. Always have to take profits. I don't want to hear my followers, the people who listen to me complaining in 14 months saying that they didn't take profits. Oh, my God. I got to go back to work. Got to put my McDonald's hat on. I don't want to hear that. So there's no reason. Uh, you'll know when it's time. Yes, you will. Bradley says, I own no DWB myself. Also, I missed it. Yeah, it's okay. I'm not a G Gen, but would like the chance. <laughs> Expedition. That's funny. Cryptic Passion. What's up, sir? I do have me some lunch money, though. I got early to that one. I also rotated some into UpX. Great buy zone. All right. I think I I think I have some lunch money. I'm not sure. Uh small spider. Yeah, thank you. All right, so. Title is Learn to Give First. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me today. If you're not religious people, that's fine. Um, this, this transcends religious and uh, that kind of stuff. You guys know I'm a Christian. I mean, I'm very vocal about it. Um, but don't. If, if you're not, if you're an atheist, you're agnostic, or whatever it is, <coughs> Muslim, doesn't matter. Hear me out, this, this story today. So I was heading back to the house, and I knew I had to go to the ATM because my son has swimming lessons in the morning. We have to pay his teacher, so I know I needed some cash. So I go to the ATM. I take 200 bucks out. <laughs> Frankly, the world today cash it seems like we're using it less and less but that's another story so i took the cash out and as i did i turned around and i saw this gentleman uh, walking down the sidewalk and he he looked like he's having a rough day i i'm something inside of me said give him some money no i'm not giving anybody any money <laughs> i didn't feel like i was i wasn't really in the mood to give anybody any money so I cross the street, and I start going, I go around the corner and start heading towards my house, my building. And there was a voice in my head that got louder and said, go help that man, give him $100. I said, I'm already halfway down the street. I don't feel like walking back. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I, I was freaking annoyed. I'm like, 
have voice. Leave me alone. I don't, I don't feel like doing that. Walking a little bit further, about halfway down the street to my house, and I heard a voice say in my head, if you don't help this man, something bad is going to happen. Not to me, but associated with him. Okay, if you guys don't know, I went to Bible college. We'll put that out there. So I do believe that I can speak to you, right? So I said, okay, all right, let me go find this guy. So I got to moving quick down the street, back the other way, took a left on Via Argentina, which is a famous street that we live near, and heading towards Via España, which is like the main drag. It's where the metro stations are. So I figured that's where he was going, was going to the metro. So I went down there. I couldn't find him at first. But then um, I took the left towards the metro station and about 30 yards or 30 meters from the metro station, he was uh, just standing there. And I walked up to him. I said, uh, Ovet, I said, uh, I said, I feel like God told me that I need to give you $100. I said, here's I did all this in Spanish. I said, this is for you. And I said, you have a great day. And I walked away and I went home. Um, I felt relieved <laughs> that I did it because that voice in my head, it was getting louder and louder and louder and more annoying and more annoying until I did something. So um, I want to implore you that your inner voice, sometimes it, uh, if you believe in God or you believe in just uh, you know the matrix or energy or whatever it is, whatever you may believe, when you hear stuff like that, take action because there's nothing in the world that will make you feel better than giving with no expectations of reciprocity. That is the key. You just give. And hopefully it'll come back to you in spades. But if it doesn't, you did well. So uh, if more people, I think if more people were like this, if the more people were, were helpful, I think the world would be a much better place. Um, I teach my son all the time. Every time we want to, you know, got some cash, I mean, he gives to either a homeless person or uh, here in, in, in our neighborhood, uh, there's a park that my son goes to. And a lot of people hang out there, you know, trying to sell pieces of candy and to, to get some money so they, they can buy groceries or whatever. Uh, you know, people parading around their kids asking for money. So my son, I'm teaching him to give. He's always giving a dollar here, two dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars to these people. Uh, we've got a gentleman on our street. We call them bien cuidados. They're the guys that help you park, like parking attendants. They're, they give themselves a job. And this guy's been working this part of uh, Via Argentina for probably 20 years. I've known him for at least 13 of them. And he's mute. He can't talk, but you know he points and directs cars around and people give him a tip for watching his car. Well, we've kind of adopted him, and I mean, over the course of the last three years since we moved into this neighborhood, I think my, my son, I probably gave him a thousand dollars to give to this guy. So, you know, you find people and you help them out, and if you can, if you can, if you if you can't, I understand, but just remember that if you do give, there's something magical that happens that things start flowing to you. Good things start happening. Uh, when I first got married, it was very difficult with my wife. She she just couldn't understand how I thought this way. That you know, every time I saw someone that was in need, I wanted to help them, and it drove her crazy. You know, we we go on trips, and uh, kids will come up. You know, it could be Roma children, whatever. In Europe, if you're in Europe, you know what I'm talking about. The Romas are real popular over there. They take advantage. Uh, they train the kids to to beg and things like that. Um, so she was always on guard of those kind of things, but I still gave, uh, I believe when your cup overflow with you, give it the wave. <laughs> so that's my story tonight. I uh, hope that, you know, one of you guys, it touched you and you feel good about that, uh, about helping other people because believe me, you throw the boomerang, it comes back to you. <laughs> Back to chat. Cacastocrates took profits from BWE casino chips. It is that's right. Do it. <laughs> How about two fifty? 
<laughs> yeah, I usually don't give away that much. I think the most I ever gave away to somebody was 400. And uh, that was uh, a gentleman that we got to know. He wasn't somebody random. He was just a guy that we knew on the street. And uh, he was he would come in far away from Panama City via the metro and get off at our metro station because he knew our area is the one of the better places to go ask, you know, go around and ask for money and stuff. And he used to get a jar of candy, chocolates, and he'd sell each chocolate for 25 cents. And I got to know him for over a while. And uh, I would talk to him once in a while. And one day he was just sitting there and he was uh, looking sullen and I had just gone to the ATM. <laughs> I just, just hooked, the, I hooked him up. And that was in uh, 2021. That's when when Hex was really flying. I had the I had the dough. Thank you, Bradley. Ted. Good evening. Exerciser. Hello. Levi's story, both you and I have the same conscious. Oh gosh. Welcome. I love it. Crypto compassion. Bendu. I want to say hi to each other. Yeah, so I, I hope that gets into somebody's mind tonight and infects you with the giving spirit. And it doesn't have to be Christmas. It could be any time of the year. <laughs> I'm notorious at Christmas, though. <laughs> My wife hates it when I have cash at Christmas. It's just like, here, here, here. here. <laughs> I'm really bad. Oh, uh, man. So, yeah, especially when we go on trips. When we're on trips, uh, when you go to another country, I, I tend to go to the ATM and take out. Uh, cash. I, it's just something in my head. I don't like to rely on uh, cards, especially in countries like Germany, where you know they they're still a little bit behind when it comes to technology. They're not so much into uh, cards; they still like cash. Uh, for example, when uh, ice the ice train canceled their services for us, we were going to to uh, Amsterdam from uh, Cologne, and I just bought the tickets the day before. And uh, my friend Richard wrote me and he's like, hey, or not Richard, one of my other friends that lives in uh, Germany. And he's like, hey, Randy, um, ICE is closed down for the next couple of days. That's the train system. I'm like, why? He goes, the drivers are going on strike. I just bought my tickets. First class tickets from Cologne to Amsterdam, which is only like uh, an hour or 45 minute ride. I'm like, oh, what are we going to do now? So we had to go get uh, bus tickets. And... Uh, can't remember the name. It doesn't matter the name of the bus line that's famous over there. And we went to the train station to get our reimbursement of our money. I'm like, oh, so sorry. Here's a, a envelope, and you fill out this, and you tell them, you know, your ticket numbers, and we will mail it to you here in Germany. I'm like, we're leaving Germany tomorrow. <laughs> so ICE got us for 180 bucks. Plus, we had to spend another like 100 and. 50 on bus tickets. So, a oh, Flix bus. It was Flix bus. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Randy, running a little late, but now reporting for class. Hey, Tex X. Welcome, sir. Now, there's our mom. <laughs> you always had a huge heart. Thank you, mom. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I think we're starting to see. A little bit of life in the pulse chain ecosystem. Let's pull it up because I want to give you guys some hope here. Let's present. Let's go back to this and then I'll switch. Let's share this tab. Should be able to see that. Yes. All right, here's Nope Token. You can see we're we're almost to our all-time highs. Our all-time high was 0 0.00417. Right now we're at 0 0.0030, so we are 25% off our high highs. That would be, woohoo! <laughs> be pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. And our market cap is sitting right at three million right now. Uh, liquidity is still fat, like 1.2 million. Thank you everybody for providing liquidity. Thank you for Solid Hex for being our benevolent whale and uh, making sure everything goes well. Okay, let's look at our top coins. Teddy Bear is back to number one, up 27.37% in the last 24 hours. 
Ackley is up 29%. Trayvon is up 1 million percent, or is that 1,000? 1,000 percent. What? <laughs> Trayvon. Uh, Gophers is down. Dick with butt is up 41 and a half percent. Launch is down 11 percent. And we're, these are pairs. Uh, CRO is up 33 percent. Uh, this is like the PCRO, right? I'm guessing. Um, the setup token is up 50, almost 15%. Nine Inch is up 7%. Spark Swap is up 2.3%. The Gray's currency, the one I was talking about earlier, is up almost 10%. Pulse Trailer Park is down 22%. Come on, man. <laughs> this is one of the ones I own. Uh, I, that was, I bought that on a whim. And once again, I, I had taken my profits out. And this is all casino money for PTP for me. Um, PLSP is heading back up. And then Blast Arm is down. Another one that I took, I took my profits that's just uh just out there running is Blast Arm. Um, Rex is the copy of Hex. Um, if you were a Rex user, one of my Patreon users let me know that if you owned Rex, you got a copy on Pulse Chain. I don't know if it's the same Rex, but if it is that one, then that's what it is. Uh, Axis is number 19, pretty much trading sideways. Uh, loan token is up 1.47%. Pulsex up 4%. ZKZX is down 8%. Nope's up 5%. Nice day going on in Pulse Chain. I like to see it. That base getting spanked. <laughs> it's down 8%. Oh, goodness. All right, so let me get back to stream here. Um, I, I was telling you guys about what would happen with uh, the Orox indicator. So I wanted to show you tonight, just like I did last night, about how this works and how things can change really quick. Um, this is Hex. Hex is still looking bugly over on Ethereum. But let's go back to Bitcoin. Yesterday, when I did a live stream with you guys, there was a red Orox indicator on top of this this candle and it has since disappeared and i warned you about that so once again if you're trading with the orox indicator you have to wait for it to paint if you want to see an example of something painting this is right here that's what this is so we had red last week and because it did not disappear and we got the new candle this green one that means it's painted so we're still likely to go down there's nothing in ethereum right now that's telling me that we're going up Except for the, you know, they got the candles going up, but we're getting weaker and weaker, uh, volumes going down. And uh, actually, the BGMC AI is, is creeping up. It's, it's back above the red line for the daily. So that's looking a little bit bullish. That's, you know, that's uh, within the last couple hours, it just touched the red line. So that's interesting. Maybe we are going to get some bullishness, but you can see that the, the volume is, uh, has been tapering off. But today we had a pretty good amount of volume. We'll see. All right. That's those things. If you guys got questions, feel free to put them in the chat. It's hope, not no, Brandy. <laughs> Believe in yourself. I see my buy there. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> All right. So well, I wanted to give you guys a, a uh, piece of hope out there, right? Thank you, Bright Light. Uh, it, things are looking good. Uh, things are starting to move up a little bit and has nothing to do with any OA wallet coming in and buying up uh, Pulse Chain or Pulse X. Uh, I, I would hate for us to only rely on that for a pump. If, if, that's, how, if that's how it's going to be during our bull run, then... I think it'll be a frustrating bull run because benevolent whales only come around once in a while and make a splash. And if you get too used to only the benevolent whale, even a note token, if we got too used to solid hex just carrying the price for us, sooner or later, uh, that benevolent whale might get tired, right? So we need to kind of carry the weight ourselves, not just with note, but everything on Pulse Chain, 
because when say Richard comes through or the OA comes through in six months to start splashing with 60, 70, 80, a hundred million dollars, uh, the market's going to move it. But if all we do is turn around and sell, uh, that whale gets jaded. It's just how it is. That's how life is. So let's not get too, too reliant on the whales to, to handle our bags. So but if you guys don't have any questions about all I've got, I mean, I've already did a, a strategy call today and, and and a call with uh, friends that's um, talking about Ali Kane's project, Pulse Wars, getting ready to launch on the 30th, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, I think you said. So uh, get your Pulse Chain ready for that. I'm going to try to pick up about 20 of the, of the Pulse Wars NFTs. Um, we'll see. But I definitely want to participate in this. I think this is going to be a really cool game. And I will be... Probably having a live one of my live streams per week is going to be just about what's going on with Pulse Wars. So I think that'd be cool. Another one is uh, that I'll be streaming about is uh, Forge, the Forge. I'll be definitely streaming about that. People, a couple people have asked me, Randy, why don't you support Pulse Launch? Look, Pulse Launch is fine, but it's like every other, in my opinion, it's like every other launch pad that's been launched in the past where you have a centralization of power and that centralization of power can be bribed and and maybe the projects that are launched on pulse launch won't be as good as they could be and that's why i like about forge because um it takes time it takes time to launch a, a good project meme coin anybody can launch it right but a quality project from scratch even if it's a fork takes time, takes developers, takes money, websites, social media, marketing, all kinds of effort to get it right. And that's why I think Forge is going to be so good for Pulse Chain. And I will be there talking about these projects, helping to launch these projects, helping to do the raises, and you know, just want, want to see good quality stuff on Pulse Chain. I don't hate Pulse Launch. I just think there's that type of launch pad is uh, proven to not be super successful. I don't know. What do I know? I've only seen a bunch of them. <laughs> All right. So everyone have a great night. I'm out of here. Um, and I hope that we have another green day tomorrow. And by the way, full moon. We should be seeing red. But <laughs> Cheers.